This is Naina Curley of WAMDA. I'm here at the MENA Business Women's Network Forum in Dubai today. Um, I'm here with Shane Alam, who started a company that made babies' clothing uh, called Baby Boom and ran that for 11 years, and then started a printer cartridge recycling company, Ecotech, which she ran for 12 years, and now is the still running Ecotech, now is the president of AUTAD, an NGO that focuses on mentoring entrepreneurs. Shireen, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you enjoying the forum? Oh, it was great. It was great. Meeting great people and uh, exchange of a lot of ideas. It was fantastic. Good. Um, so tell me about the biggest challenges that entrepreneurs in Egypt are facing right now. Uh, I think there are two areas. Um, right now, it's marketing, definitely. I mean, a lot of people and, um, would love to start entrepreneurial ventures. And a lot of people who have already uh, entrepreneurial ventures are all suffering from, um, I don't want to say no ability, but very low ability of marketing their products, although they're very good products. And um, this is an area, if it's fixed, I think it's one of the fears of a lot of people to enter the entrepreneurial field. The other one is, of course, which is the common thing, access to finance, particularly what's happening all over the world. And I don't want to go into this because it's a common problem all over. Uh, but I think it's solvable. Uh, if markets are going to be open, then you can find uh, a formula to work out the access to finance. And how is OTAD working to help entrepreneurs face those issues, especially the marketing issue? Well, with the marketing issue, we try to find independent uh, or outsourcing of you know, marketing, and we try to link entrepreneurs to those sources. So at least we give them another formula of trying to work out how to sell their products. It's not only you have to do it by yourself. Uh, if you find professionals already doing it, uh, you can just link with them and you create each of you separate companies and still you benefit by selling the products that you make. And what is the breakdown of entrepreneurs that you're mostly dealing with in terms of sector? Uh, we have, mainly we deal with artisans. Uh, that's one of the major programs that we have. Uh, and also we have entrepreneurs with creative ideas. Uh, that's another program actually that's running. Uh, and the creative ideas mainly um, you know, fall in areas of, we try to get them in areas of high demand. Uh, for example, uh, we work in getting research uh, of what are the areas in the market that need certain uh, products or services. And we try to announce that and get entrepreneurs to sort of apply in it. And so we, they can have a quick startup. Absolutely. What can the public sector, Egypt is in such a transitional moment right now, what do you think the public sector and then also the private sector can do to encourage entrepreneurship right now? If you're talking right now as in right now, I think the public sector cannot do more than please do not change any laws or regulations. Keep them the way they are now because any change now is going to disrupt whatever safety or security that we have in the market from knowing what's there. The private sector, actually, they can do a lot because I think now is the time to invest open markets and for anybody who has the money and the means to start subcontracting so that smaller companies can start to be created and the linkage between them can get the dynamics of the market moving. Absolutely. Um, what factors contributed to your founding Ecotech? Did you have support from your family and your community when you did that? And I guess even before that, baby boom. Um, what were the biggest challenges that you had, I guess, briefly? Well, I, I cannot say that I had any um, problems with creating the company. Although, uh, I mean, my family thought at first I was crazy because I don't have anybody that's entrepreneurial in the family. Uh, and I had a permanent job at the UN and I resigned that and started my first company. But they did not say, do not do it. They just said, if you really believe in doing it, go ahead. So I guess that you could call a huge support by itself. Um, but the challenge was in growing, not in starting. I think the, the startup part was the excitement. Uh, you have an idea, you totally believe in it, and you really want to get to seeing it materialize. The challenge was once it materialized and it's reaching to higher levels. This was the main challenge, because you start to face competition, you start to face financial uh, issues of where to get the extra money to grow, and you have to open more markets uh, to sustain this growth. 
so I think the challenge is always, for me at least, they came midway uh, when I was growing and not at the beginning. That makes sense. It is the toughest phase. You're scaling out to other markets. Yes, yes, definitely. So as you're helping these entrepreneurs launch and then scale, um, what advice do you find yourself typically giving them? Um, typically, I keep telling them, whatever you start, whatever idea you're getting or, or doing, have a passion about it. Believe in it. And please do not think about failing before you start. It's, it's an option that you keep in the back of your mind, but it should never be in front of you. Always think, I'll make it work because we always face challenges and we will always have to get a little bit of fear in us when we face them, but if you believe in this, it's never gonna stop you. So have the passion and have the belief that you're going to make it happen. So you don't believe in failing quickly and starting again or iterating? Uh, I don't want to be a dreamer and say you never fail, but I believe in failing, of course, uh, and I think that makes us stronger. But the point is, if you put it in front of you, it's going to stop you. It's going to paralyze you. Uh, it's not going to get you to be creative enough to get out of the small loopholes that you can fall in while building up your entrepreneurship. Uh, but yes, you have to accept failure as an option, and you have to know how to deal with it and learn from it. It's not the end of the, the road. Actually, it's the beginning. So that's how you have to see it. I see, so you're saying just don't keep that fear of failure in front of you or else it'll paralyze you. Exactly, yes. I see. Well, Shireen, I look forward to hearing more about your entrepreneurs on WAMDA and hearing their stories as well. Um, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure.